Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm with my friend Zucchini, who's going to give you some tips on how to get on all the top labels. Take it away, bird. Alright, just kidding, <laughs> but for real today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about some tips to get on the biggest labels. You know, I've got a lot of questions about this. Of course, I've shown you guys how to make the music to get on these labels, but now I'm actually going to show you some things that I've learned from dealing with labels myself, and just kind of like, you know, how to conduct yourself as a professional. And ultimately get what you want you know it's not just about having someone tell you your track is cool but actually getting on these labels and getting out there now before i start this video i also want to let you guys know if you enjoy my content and you want to support me definitely check out my sample packs they're right at the top of the description you know i don't make a whole lot just off of youtube ads and stuff like that but with these sample packs and different things like this i'm able to keep going and it really helps me so i can keep showing you guys new tips every day and yeah so the first tip that i'm going to give you guys about getting on the bigger labels is you need to be really honest with yourself about where your tracks are and what i mean by this is like you know i think a lot of people can be tempted to say like okay i made my first tech house track like let's go and send it to solid grooves let's send it to tool room but the truth is like if you were really you know honestly looking at that like your first track in any style isn't going to probably be on any label like, you probably need to just kind of keep that one in the vault and so what i would do instead is really listen to your tracks against other tracks you know like check it out with references and really check tracks on the label that you're trying to get on and see and again be really honest with yourself you know if your bass isn't loud enough or your kick isn't hard enough or whatever there's no shame in that there's only shame in keeping doing it over and over when you already know what you need to do to make your track better you're just not being very honest with yourself. So you need to do that first you need to get it out of your head that you know everything because you probably don't and you're probably going to be able to make your tracks better once you get out of that mindset the second tip here is to work really, really hard on your tracks, which is obvious. But what I mean by this is, like, these really need to be the best tracks that you've ever made. If you're trying to get on these bigger labels, you know, it's not just that you're on the label. It has to be something really good. And it has to be something really special that's worth their time. Because the bigger labels, you know, they're putting money into the releases. They are, you know, getting promo work done. They're getting, like, premieres on blogs and stuff. Like, all of this takes a lot of resources, not just money, but time and energy on their end. So, they can only really do that if you have a truly special track, you know? So, it's like, don't try to just make some random stuff and then send it to a big label and then get upset when they don't sign it. It's like, you know, if you have something really special and you've worked really hard to earn making really good tracks that are really special, I think that it actually can be a little bit smoother than you would think. But it's just that hard work is going to be really important. And the other tip that goes with this is send at least five tracks. Because I think if you send, like, one track or if you send two tracks, they can't really, like, know too much about you from that you know a lot of people can make like one good track with some sample pack loops and then just sort of end up with a good track but it's really about like if they can see that you can consistently do this and like then you know if your track does well then they can say all right let's do part two you know let's do the follow-up like if you can only make one cool track it's not really worth it and the other thing is you know they're getting demos from people who are sending them like 10 plus tracks you know and those people no offense but they kind of deserve it more than somebody who is just sending in one track because it's like you know you're they're working a lot harder to make those tracks and they're trying to really come to the label and do some stuff for them to kind of collaborate rather than just hey here's my work here's one track you know sign it it's like no you have to prove to them why you're worth their time essentially and that you can consistently do this now the next tip here is to make your tracks with the specific label that you're trying to get on in mind and this is a bit of a controversial take. I know a lot of people see this kind of as like, you know, selling out or kind of doing something for somebody else's taste. But in my opinion, I think that there's a lot of creativity in there. Now, what I mean by this is like, obviously, you're going to sort of figure out the mold. Like, let's say you're trying to get on like Cool Room or something like that. Okay, so, you know, you're not going to make like a big progressive house track, right? Like, you're going to sit down, see what kind of vibes they're signing at the moment, and then find the creativity in that. I think that to say, oh, you're just selling out when you try to make a song for a specific label, you know, that's kind of a lazy way to approach it. I mean, there's so much creativity. This is the whole point of, like, minimal music, so to speak, is finding this creativity in kind of bigger pictures like this, essentially. And that's really what you need to do, you know? Of course, yeah, you're going to fit into a mold. Like, if you're trying to get on, like, Craft Tech or something like that, okay, you're going to make 128, 130 BPM, you know, it's going to have that same kind of rumble kick. We know that, like, of course, and obviously, yeah, if you only focus on those things, then it's going to be kind of boring, but those, you know, that, those are just the basics. There's so much you could do. You could put a xylophone in there. 
You can put a guitar in there. You can use your voice to make, like, there's so much stuff that you can do while still making tracks specifically for a label. And this way, one, the label is going to feel like you actually care about them and you're not just sending it to them because another label didn't sign it, but actually because you really believe in what they're doing and you want to be a part of it. And also, you know, it's just going to feel like, kind of, I mean, it's going to get your results a lot faster. You're going to end up making stuff that is actually going to get signed by these labels. And the way you do this, you know, is just trying to reference a lot of tracks from the label. You know, again, really pay attention to what's going on because it's just not worth it for them if you're just going to send your track to like 30 different labels and then just sign to whichever one. It's like, they don't want to do that. They want to be the special label that you send it to because you love them, you know? So yeah, and then the last tip here that I think is going to be really important, possibly more important than any, definitely for me getting on these bigger labels, is just to be really, 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 really persistent. You just have to be as persistent as possible. Like, truly be annoying, honestly. Like, just keep making really good tracks. And I'm not saying be annoying to the degree where you're sending them a message every day and you're saying, hey, bro, what's up? Like, how's it going today? Like, don't do that. But when I say be persistent slash be kind of annoying, I mean, like, really be sending them lots of tracks, you know? If they're not signing your tracks, well, keep going. Keep trying new things, you know? Your way of doing it isn't working. But that doesn't mean they can't sign one of your tracks. It just means they don't want to sign that style of track that you've been doing, you know? Think outside the box. Because really, what it comes down to, I think, is two things. One, making really good tracks. And two, if you're actually invested in that label. No big label is going to sign you if you're sending your tracks to 30 different labels. You really have to, like, show them that you really care about what they're doing because there's a million people that just want to get on them just because it's a big label and they think they'll get a beat for it number one so you have to prove to them why you deserve it and i think that being really persistent shows them that above all else because it's like dude like this guy's really been hitting us up for weeks and weeks and weeks obviously he wants to be on this label versus somebody who just hits them up they say no and then they never hear from them again they know that that person wasn't really serious in the first place so yeah those are some important tips that i picked up on working with these different labels, and especially working with the bigger labels, I think a lot of these things can really help you to get what you want and get your tracks to the next level. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Zucchini and I are signing off. Like I said in the beginning, if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to support me, you can get my sample pack in the top of the description. I'm also leaving my email for custom tutorials and ghost productions and those as well. All this stuff really helps to support me and keep me going so I can keep bringing you guys tips like this that are not on YouTube yet. And yeah, thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.